options. I'm going to move over to the next artboard. I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to name that transform and scale. And again, I'm just going to repeat the same steps I did before. So I'm going to create a background shape by grabbing my rectangle tool. This time I'm going to add this sort of mustard color. So in my color panel, I'll just add these values. So zero for cyan, 15, 100, and zero for black. And then this time what I'm going to do is grab my ellipse tool from my basic shapes. And from the center point, I'm just going to hold down the option key and my shift key, and I'm just going to click and drag a circle. So I'm just going to add a one point stroke, which is black. And I'm going to remove the fill color from my circle. So what I'm going to do here is actually use the type on a path tool. So over my toolbox, I'm going to hold down on the text tool and I'm going to select type on a path. So from here, I could just click once on top of that circle and I'm just going to type out the word graphic and add a space. And next, what I'm going to do is add a bullet point to separate these words. So what I can do is go up to my type menu and choose glyphs. And in the glyphs panel, this is where I can get all my punctuation marks, currency markers, and my bullet points. So I'm just going to scroll down until I see this bullet point here. And with my cursor active, I'm just going to double click and then it adds that bullet point in there. Okay. So now I could just close that. I'll just add another space. And I'm just going to highlight this. I'm just going to copy it. So Command or Control C. Place my cursor after it. And then hold Command V or Control V. And then I'll just repeat that. So Command V all the way around until it fits. So if there's a little bit of space here, I can either increase my font size by going up to my control panel and clicking up one size if I want to, or I can adjust my circle. Maybe I scale it down just a little bit, okay? or I could scale it up, right? just so that it fits. A shortcut to actually increase or decrease your font size is the shift command greater than or less than sign. Okay? So if you wanna increase or decrease your font size, you can actually change that from there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is create a repetition of this. So to do that, I'm going to have this type selected and I'll go over to my toolbox. I'll double click on the scale tool, type 90%, hit the tab key and click copy and see how that looks. If we need a little bit more space, you can adjust that so I can undo, double click on my scale tool, maybe type 88%. And click copy and that's a little bit better so now i can repeat that or i can go up to my object menu and because this was a transformation i can go down to transform and choose transform again or hold the shortcut key command d so i'm going to hold command d and that's basically just going to repeat the last transform effect that i actually committed so i can do that all the way down until i get right to the center here so lastly, what I could do is select all my type. I'm going to hold shift and deselect the background. And what I can do is maybe just move this off to the center here and position it right in that corner. Okay. So once I do that, I'll obviously need to scale this entire thing up a little bit because okay, I maybe want the text to actually reach around this grid marker area. So again, I'm going to double click on my scale tool. And now I might increase this maybe 200% and then hit the tab key and see how that will look. And that's pretty close. That's, I kind of like that where that is. So I'm just going to click OK. And then of course I have all this access here, right? So I'll show you a technique to actually hide the rest of this. So before I show you that, I'm just going to grab my type tool. I'm going to click once on the artboard. I'm going to change my point size to 18 back again, change it back to light. And then again, I'm going to type out transform 
and scale with Adobe Illustrator. And again, you could choose where you want to put this on your grid. Okay. I also forgot to add the word design to both of these. So I'm just going to add that again. So that was at 36 points and that was bold. And we just typed the word design. Okay. So again, you could just choose where you think this would be most appropriate. Again, you could just kind of eyeball it if you wanted to. All right. So next, what I want to do is maybe just show you how to hide all of this excess artwork that's on your canvas that maybe doesn't belong to your artboard. So I can again just select all this type here. I'll deselect my background color. So now what I can do is grab a rectangle tool again and I'm going to draw another rectangle that just covers the background shape. Okay, so my entire artboard like that. All right, so I'm going to expand my layer panel and I'm going to open that up. And you'll see that this shape is going to be converted into what's called a layer mask. Okay, so what it does is it's going to mask out anything that goes beyond the bounding box of that shape. So just like you work with layer masks in Photoshop, this is sort of the same thing, right? So we can call that a layer mask if you apply it to an entire layer's contents in, in Illustrator, or we call it a clipping mask if you're masking out just two objects, okay? So to make this work, all you need to do is put this object on the topmost layer in your sequence, click on your main layer, and down at the bottom here, you'll see where it says make release clipping mask. And if I click on that, you'll see that it puts this mask in here. I'm just going to expand my layers. So you'll see it recognizes a clipping mask with this underline, okay? and it just hides the excess. Okay? It doesn't delete it. It's just temporarily hiding it. So if I click on that eyeball to release it, I can see all that artwork again. Okay. So that's how you just hide the sort of contents that are expanding beyond your artboard. So again, I could just collapse my layer now, hit command S and save this. And now we can move on to the fourth example, which is to use envelope distort and the make with mesh function.